template added references to those assemblies in the .NET Framework class library that we as developers might find useful for the majority of use cases. However, if we need an assembly containing some portion of the .NET Framework class library that has not already been added to our project, then we can simply add a reference to it. So this is one of three ways that we'll demonstrate on how to uh, add a reference to a, an assembly. The first being an assembly from the .NET Framework class library. Now there's a number of different ways to go about this. The easiest way I think is to go to the Solution Explorer and then right click on References and select Add Reference. And here you can see there are a series of, I guess, tabs along the left hand side that would allow us to choose from the various types of assemblies uh, that are available to us. We want to choose the framework and these are all of the assemblies that are part of the .NET Framework class library. All right, now and you can see that there's already check marks next to a number of the system.this, system.that, uh, system.net.http, and these contain a number of different classes, each with many methods, uh, and these are just automatically accessible. If we needed something that is not contained here, uh, then we could choose, for example, to um, just select a check mark next to the one that we want to add to our project system.net and click OK and you can see that it's added a reference to system.net into our project in the Solution Explorer. Now we can reference any of the classes and utilize any of the methods in that particular assembly. Okay, So that's one way if we need to access some part of the .NET Framework class library. Now, in addition to that, there are libraries that are created both by Microsoft and there are libraries that are created by, uh, a, uh, by open source contributors, other companies that are provided for free for very specific purposes uh, in our applications. And so uh, these are often common features that many applications need. That's why they've been open sourced. However, uh, they're available through a special tool called NuGet, which is a repository that's maintained by a foundation supported by Microsoft, but ultimately its own entity. All right, and so there are a number of different ways to work with NuGet in Visual Studio. I'm going to choose the visual way to do it, uh, and I find that to be the, the easiest for those who are just getting started and for me because I'm a more visual kind of person. There's also a textual, uh, almost command line style interface that would allow you to do similar sorts of things and even script these things. Uh, so let's go to uh, the Tools menu and select NuGet Package Manager and then Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. This will open up a tab. Undoubtedly, no matter what I see, you see on my screen, it'll look different on your screen because this is going under active development for the last few years and it has changed frequently. Now, if there were a package that we wanted to add to our solution, we could simply search for it. Uh, typically, um, we can learn about these sorts of things through blog posts and, and what have you. Uh, say, for example, I wanted to access a database from my console window application and I wanted to use the Entity Framework API from Microsoft. It's available through as a NuGet package through this Manage NuGet Packages for Solution dialog. So I can select it. Whoops, I can select it as one of the options. You can see it's one of the most frequently downloaded. Furthermore, uh, I would then choose which project in my solution that I wanted to add it to, and I can choose the install button. There's some other options as well. I'll leave you to, uh, to investigate those on your own. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I agree to the terms for using the Entity Framework. And in this particular case, it installed uh, just a number of references to assemblies and copied them down locally to my computer. Now, depending on the type of package, uh, it could not only contain .NET assemblies, but also sample uh, source code files. It could actually uh, run macros inside of Visual Studio. It could include things like style sheets and HTML and even graphical assets that it will include your project. So uh, this is the second way that we can go about adding assemblies and more to our projects. 
But the third way that I want to talk about is whenever we want to add a reference to a class library that we've created. Now we haven't created a class library up to this point, so this is a perfect opportunity to do that and then add a reference to it in our project. So what I'll do is start off by creating a new project. Let me go ahead and let you see my entire screen here. And in the new project dialog, I want to make sure to choose uh, C Sharp. And then I want to choose uh, Class Library. Notice that I chose the one that doesn't have the little NuGet logo next to it. It's just uh, a little, looks like several books and the C Sharp logo. Now this will undoubtedly look different to you, but just make sure that it's a regular old class library. And here we're going to call this My Code Library and click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and say I don't really care to save my other solution there. All right, and so inside of this, you can see that I don't have a, uh, a program.cs. All I have is a class1.cs. There's no uh, static void main. Uh, and so what I'll call this is the, um, the scrape class. And we'll have one public method. So public string uh, scrape web page and we'll create a version of this where you provide it just the URL and then we'll create a second version of this where you provide the URL and a file path. All right, and so in this first case, I'm just going to copy down some of the code that we've uh, we worked with previously to create this functionality, where we were actually uh, using this web client to go out, download a page, and then save it to a text file. I'm just going to generalize this. Uh, remember what I did previously when I hit Control period on the keyboard in order to add a reference to System.net or add a using statement for System.net. And the next thing I'm going to do here is actually replace this hard-coded string with whatever gets passed in by the end user. All right, finally, I'm also going to have to add or resolve this reference to the file class. It's in the system.io namespace, so I'm going to add a using statement for that. Uh, however, in this specific case, I'm not going to write this uh, to a file in this overloaded version of it. Uh, in fact, what I'll just do is uh, return whatever's been input, uh, actually downloaded from client.downloadString. All right. Now the second version will do something almost identical. Uh, here, let me replace this with URL, and we'll get rid of console.writeline, and uh, we'll go ahead and um, write this to the file path that was passed in and then we'll return the reply. Now truth be told this might be a good situation where I could actually take these lines of code and create a private helper method out of them uh, and maybe that's a good idea. Let's do that right now. Um, private string uh, get web page, all right, and we'll pass in the URL. And so here, and now both of these can just call, whoops, get web page. So, and here we'll go um, string return or reply equals get web page. All right, see what I did there? How I was able to use a private helper method to encapsulate the functionality of actually getting the web page itself. 
Uh, and then in this case, I was able to uh, extend the scrape web page method to include writing that to an actual file path. All right. So now that I've created this, and let me go ahead and rename this file as well by right-clicking on it and selecting uh, Rename, and I'm going to choose to name this file uh, Scrape as well. I could name it anything I want. It won't matter because the name of the class itself is Scrape. Uh, but at this point now, I'm going to go ahead and build the solution. It looks like it built. In fact, let me go ahead and build a release version of this. All right, great. So now let's open up a second version of Visual Studio. And I'm going to call this uh, My Client. So this will be a console application called My Client. And we'll click OK. And what I want to do is to, first of all, add a reference to that DLL that we created uh, just a moment ago. So I'm going to go and right click on references and select add a reference. All right, so here I have some choices. Uh, ideally, I would be able to look and find it in the same solution. We'll come back to that and do it in just a little bit here. Uh, but I may have to go and actually browse through the file system to find uh, this. And unfortunately, this is popping off the screen. Uh, however, hopefully we can work our way through this. And I'm going to navigate to the bin directory and to the release directory and find my code library. And then I'm going to select the Add button and then click OK. All right. And so now that I've done that, what I should be able to do is get to the Scrape class, right? But it doesn't see the Scrape class. So I'm going to hit Control period on my keyboard. And notice that it will find the correct using statement. The using my code library namespace um, scrape, my scrape, equals new scrape, <laughs> okay, and now I should be able to go my scrape dot, and there we go, scrape web page, and I should be able to give it a URL, so let's go alright, and that should return a string, so string return uh, or actually just um, value equals, all right, let's move this over a little bit. And then I should be able to print that to screen. So uh, console.write. So, and now we should be able to run the application. And it takes a moment, but it pops up. All right, so what we're able to do there? Well, we created a reusable library now. So whenever we want to scrape a web page, we can utilize this in any of our other projects. Now, did you find how inconvenient it was to actually go and search around uh, whenever we wanted to add a reference to it? I had to go and browse through the uh, through all my projects and everything. But I do want you to notice one thing about what happened after we did that. Let's go to my projects and let's find that client and let's navigate into the bin directory and notice that it copied mycodelibrary.dll into the bin directory for the client application. So that's one of the things that it will do uh, with any of the um, uh, third-party uh, assemblies that it, will, that it will utilize, all right? But wouldn't it be easier if we were to start this over from scratch and we were to create a single solution that had both the client and the code library in, uh, the, same, in the same solution? So let's do that now. I'm going to actually open up a third copy of Visual Studio. And here, let's create a new solution. So what I'm going to do is actually scroll all the way to the bottom and uh, choose other project types and choose Visual Studio Solutions and find blank solution. Now, this might be in a different place, so you may have to kind of hunt around for it, but you ultimately want to choose blank solution. It should be available to you. And we're going to call this um, Lesson 18. 
So the solution's name will be Lesson 18, but what we're going to do is add projects to this solution. So the first project that I'm going to add, and there's a number of ways to do this, like add, but it goes off to the right-hand side of the screen. I could add new project, uh, file, add new project, and then we're going to choose the class library. So we'll call this the, uh, the scrape library, all right? And then I'm going to choose to create another uh, another project and add it to our solution called uh, of type console application, and this will be the scrape client. Okay. All right, so uh, in our scrape library, what I do just for simplicity's sake is actually go to the work that we've done here a moment ago, and I'm going to copy all of this like so. And let's come back here, and I want to paste all this in like so. And yes, I'm going to have to uh, resolve these class names by adding using statements here and here as well. All right, that should work. It looks like I actually lost my class name, so let's go public class great. And then let's make sure to put everything inside of it. All right, there we go. Now we get it working. And I'll rename this as well to just scrape. I could have left it, called it class one, but that, that'll work just fine. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and build that. Right-clicked on the project name and selected build. All right. And now what I want to do in the client to utilize that class library is I need to add a reference to it. So here again, I'm going to right-click and select add reference. And this time I'm going to go to projects and notice if solution is selected, the scrape library will be an option. I'll choose that and click OK. And now uh, we can utilize scrape library in our application. So uh, let's go ahead and just type in the word scrape uh, dot, whoops, scrape dot, and it's not going to find it. So I'm going to hit control period and I need to add a using statement. Since I renamed it, now it's called scrape library, uh, so I'm going to add the scrape library namespace to uh, using statement to the code file. So scrape my scrape. In fact, I don't have to do all that, right? I can just copy and paste it from the previous client, like so. And we can rerun the application. Whoops. And it says a project with an output type of class library cannot be started directly. All right, why do you suppose that happened? Well, because there are actually two projects now in my solution, and you can't execute a library, correct? So what we need to do is right-click on the client project and select Set as Startup Project. And now, let's go ahead and close that. When we attempt to run the application, it'll work. Furthermore, if we were to make any changes to how the library actually works, uh, let's say, uh, what could we do here? That's interesting. Uh, let's, um, let's do this. We'll make a change in one spot. And then I'll go content plus equals, um, that's all folks <laughs> for the very end, all right, of that string that's returned. And I'll return content this time, all right, let's make sure we add everything there. So we've made a pretty big, pretty big change to the, to the application, and now when I run the application, it will recompile the DLL. It will add it to our project, and at the very end, it adds, that's all, folks. Okay, it's just the, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head, all right? So uh, hopefully now you can see that there are several different ways to add assemblies. If it's part of the .NET Framework class library, then obviously there's a way to do that. If it's a free or open source 
package that's available from NuGet. We can use the NuGet package manager, or we can create our own third-party uh, class library and then add a reference to it by browsing. Or if we were to create the uh, the client and the library inside of the same solution, then we can reference it in the add reference dialog, but just under the uh, project solution option. And we get the added benefit of being able to make updates, not having to go through two copies of Visual Studio to update it. It'll all be just, uh, it'll update the next time we hit run. It'll recompile it and everything, okay? So um, at any rate, uh, that's pretty much it for this lesson. Uh, we'll continue on the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thanks.